are officially in quarter two of 2023. That is actually crazy. My name is Jenna. If you guys are new, welcome to my April plan with me and 2023 checking in with our goals video. I don't know about you guys, but I always feel like the year is going by so, so, so fast. And I feel like that's just something that I say every single month. Like I can't believe another month has gone by, but to be honest, I feel like a lot has happened in 2023. And I feel like going into quarter two of a new year is a really good way to reevaluate where you are with your yearly goals, how the year has been going so far, if there are any changes that you can make for the upcoming quarter and just kind of overall plan for the next month. So that's what this video is. Welcome back. And if you clicked on this video and you also haven't planned for the new month, don't worry. It's literally April 6th as I'm filming this. And for the sake of it being late, that's just a big reality of my life and probably so many of your lives too. You don't plan for the next month every single time before that month begins. A lot of times I'm planning for the new month, like as the month is starting. And especially for me, I was traveling in the last week of March. So truthfully, I've been still catching up back into my routine and figuring out like all of my planning things. For the sake of this being relatable and late, I still wanna plan the rest of my month out because I don't think it's ever too late to start planning. And just because it's April 6th or a week into a new month doesn't mean that you can't plan for the rest of it. And according to my Notion template, which we'll also go through in this video, we are only 26% of the way into 2023. So there's still a long way to go. Late doesn't exist. Late is like December. That's when you're like, okay, Maybe I should have done this earlier. Since it's April 6th, I just kind of want to show you guys how I ended up planning the rest of my month out considering we're already like one week into it. So I feel like it'll be a little quicker than usual, but I still want to reflect with you guys and show you guys my goals and how I'm approaching April because it is a little bit different than my other months. I'm trying to be more mindful of the fact that I kind of slipped off my goals and my habits in the last couple of weeks. And then for the second half of this video, we're going to look at our 2023 goals and just kind of check in on everything. So if you guys like what you hear, then let's just go ahead and get started. Part one is April planning slash how did March go? I'm going to start off a little bit differently than I usually do for my plan with me videos. So for March, I usually show you guys my bullet journal slash planner at the end of the video to show you guys like how my trackers all looked, how the next month looks, and just kind of show you guys like what I've accomplished in terms of my habit and mood tracking. Because I do use my planner slash bullet journal for that reason. I don't use my notion for habit tracking or anything just because this is like a pre-made bullet journal by shop Amanda Rachel Lee or Amanda Rachel Lee on YouTube. And I usually like tracking my habit and my mood in the pre-made trackers just because it's like fun to color and it's good self-care. But to be honest, I'm just gonna show you guys how my March trackers looked. Here's how it looks for March. I just straight up didn't track my habits or my mood for the last like two weeks of the whole month. And that is totally okay and normal. Not gonna color this in for the sake of showing you guys what it looks like completed. I don't always track my habits every single day or my mood every single day. So I just kind of wanna show you guys that like, yes, I also slack sometimes. I don't always track every single thing all the time. But it would have looked really cute if I did finish. But once I realized I was like two weeks out, I was like, I don't even remember if I did floss on March 21st and honestly, who cares? It's fine. I think habit and mood tracking is just fun and it's nice to look back on and it's really just like coloring at the end of the day. So it's kind of no big deal if you don't do it. But I really do love using this planner and this bullet journal just because it's a really, really good mood boost. It like genuinely brightens my mood to color every single month, to look at the stuff that I've colored every single month and to plan out my daily tasks and to do's outside of work. And then lastly, before I show you guys my notion for how my March goals and everything went, I'm just gonna show you guys my April spreads now. You guys, this is so pretty this is so pretty again this was already pre-made all i had to do was color it and i just i just can't it's so cute here's how the trackers are looking this month it's gonna be so pretty i'm genuinely like encouraged to do this every single day because i really want to see this finished i want to see it done and then here's how every single weekly layout looks so that's the bullet journal quick and easy now let's head over to our notion and look at our goals welcome to my beloved notion template if you guys are new to my channel i actually have this template available to you for free if you would like it because i myself am a notion beginner i started using notion in the beginning of 2023 so like at the end of 2022 when i was figuring out my 2023 planning and I love Notion. I really made this template my own, but it is made by a beginner. So I feel like it's very minimalistic 
very functional, kind of built for someone that does have a daily to-do list or planner outside of their digital planning. Just because I think a blend between digital planning and traditional paper planning is kind of the perfect sweet spot for me. It looks kind of exactly the same as when I first made this available to you guys. So the insert name here, life, that is for you guys. But I feel like it shows that this is exactly the template that I need because I haven't changed anything since I first made this template. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Again, it's in my description box. But let's go to our monthly goals and reflections. And before we get into April, of course, I need to show you guys how March went. We're just going to open all this up. I think I did okay. I give myself a B minus, honestly, for how March went in terms of my goals. As you guys can see, in terms of career, I did do a video outside my comfort zone. It was my closet purge slash declutter with me, which was very satisfying. So if you guys haven't watched it, you definitely should. It was a lot of fun. And it made me realize there's a lot of stuff that even in this apartment that I've lived in for nine months, there's stuff that I was able to throw out and give away. And I had a conversation with my mom the other day. I think I'm gonna do that for my childhood bedroom in a different video in an upcoming month. So I'm really glad just because I feel like pushing myself outside my comfort zone is what helps me make realizations discovery, be more creative, and just kind of learn more about myself at the end of the day as both a creator and a person. So I'm really happy that I did that. I did not make a JH Collective limited edition color slash hat bundle. It's still in the works, so I'm not going to say I worked to zero on it, but it's just not done in this month. Business bank account slash open a business credit card. I did check this off because I did one of the things. I did open my business bank account finally, which in hindsight I will thank myself for because it will just be a lot easier to do my taxes next year with a business bank account, but I didn't make the business credit card and I will this month. So that's in my April monthly goals as like a sneak peek. But I did check this off just because I am really proud of myself for doing that. I've been wanting to do that for the last like year and I finally did it open a business bank account. No nine to five late nights in March. I did check this off. If you guys are new to my channel, I do also work full time at an accounting firm in the US. I work in corporate and I work in internal strategy and I do work from home 100% of the time. My team is fully remote and I can just go into the office whenever I want to. So I feel like having a mainly work from home life is just really easy to work late or to put stuff off at work and get off late for the sake of having the flexibility of working from home. But for me, I just really, really wanted to prioritize in March. No late nights, especially with my deadlines. I had a couple of deadlines last month and that's usually when I work late. So I'm just really proud of myself that I didn't do that last month. 80-20, I did weekly meal plan every week. I'm really happy because if you guys have been watching my monthly plan with me, it's been a really big intention of mine to live an 80-20 lifestyle, to start enjoying cooking more and to just kind of lean into a healthier lifestyle, both in what I'm cooking and how I'm moving my body. And I feel like at this point, weekly meal planning has really become a habit of mine. It's not something that I feel like I need to check off every single week, but I will in April to hold myself accountable and probably for the next couple months until we're halfway into the year so that I can fully say it is a habit to weekly meal plan. Plan out my happy meals. So if you guys are new to the 80-20 lifestyle, 20% of what you eat is supposed to be more like indulging type foods. It doesn't have to be whole foods or what we consider healthy foods, but 20% of the time we're allowing ourselves to fill our soul and to make us happy with what we eat. So I wanted to plan that out a little bit better just because I think... I'm learning that the more I plan out, the more I can actually fit everything I want to into my life. I did plan that out, which I'm really happy about, but I did not cook the Korean dish from scratch that I said I was going to. I told myself I was gonna make jajangmyeon and honestly, I just didn't. During my deadline week, I didn't really cook that much. And then during the last week of March, I was actually away. So I feel like I really only had two full weeks to make that happen. And just with all of my other goals that I wanted to accomplish, I just didn't end up doing this, so. It's fine, I'm just extra disappointed in myself. Personal, one long run a week. I did this kind of, I did do a long run and I have been working out very consistently leading up to my 10 mile run. So I did check this off, but did I do like a five plus mile run every single week? No, but I did work out a lot and I did get sick in March. I don't know, I think I still did it. <laughs> Journal two times a week, I did do that, but I haven't been doing it since April has started, so I'm really trying to get back on my journaling game because I find that even a week off of journaling just makes me a lot more like mentally unstable and it really shows me the value of journaling too. This is my journal. I keep it right here all the time. It's very compact. It's from Type Haley. It's perfect. And I know that people think that journaling is silly, but truly ever since I've been adopting this into my healthy habits, I find myself just a lot clearer in my mind. I really think it's because I let everything out in my journal, whether it's just like five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, just whatever it takes to like let out my emotions or let out my thoughts. 
in my journal, pen to paper is just really nice. So I'm really glad I prioritized that last month and I'm definitely gonna do that this month. Full rest day from fitness one times a week. I am really glad that I did do this too. I kind of talked about in my last monthly plan with me that I felt like I was over exercising and like overdoing it with my body. So I'm really glad that I prioritized that rest in March. And then the two things that I didn't do was read before bed only on weekdays. I definitely just was on my phone a lot before bed. I did finish a whole book, which I'm really proud of myself for because I wasn't even like intending to read a whole book. I read Things We Never Got Over. I wasn't even planning to read it, but I just picked it up and I couldn't put it down. So reading before bed only on weekdays, no, I was on my phone, but I did read a lot. So it's fine. <laughs> and then sleep before 10. Again, I mainly didn't sleep before 10. One, because of my deadline week. I wasn't working late, but I felt like I was kind of making up for my day and really decompressing. It just took a lot longer than usual on stressful days that I was going to bed after 10. And then I was reading my book a lot. So I was going to sleep like way after 10 because I was so into my book, which like, can I really be that mad at myself for not accomplishing this goal if it meant that I was reading? No, I don't think so. And then lastly, finished decor for my apartment. If you guys noticed, I do have a bookcase in my apartment now and it's so pretty. I didn't film it unfortunately, but this was really just like kind of the last thing to do for finishing my apartment decor. And I love it so much. It adds the perfect amount of like character and color, but still maintaining a minimalist style in this apartment. And I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I think it's so pretty. If you guys watch the Work to Live Diaries, then you guys already know, but I did make a lot of improvements on my work from home setup, which I'm really happy about because that has taken like truly months. No more box under my desk anymore. Now we just have under the desk cable management, just like with a sticker so that you don't see any cords or anything. And it's so nice. I'm actually really proud. Even though I didn't complete everything, I feel like the stuff that I did complete last month was very good. And then I always have an end of month of reflection that I do just kind of as like a quick, like memorable moments that I don't wanna forget about, just things that I learned, things I wanna improve on. I'm not really gonna talk about all of this. I will say that next month, I don't wanna be that metric focused. I feel like I tried doing the whole like 75%, 50%, whatever. I just don't wanna do that. I feel like it sets myself up for failure and I don't like that. And I tested it out for the last couple of months and I just don't think it works for me. That's definitely something that I was thinking about a lot in March. That's everything for last month. Now let's talk about April goals. These are my goals for the month of April. Let's just open everything up. And since I am filming this on April 6th, there are two things that I already did. I just think it's nice to check this stuff off. These are like big things that I wouldn't always put on my goals. So shouldn't I put it in even if I already did it? For career, I wanna do one video outside my comfort zone. Even though I've been doing this as a monthly goal every single month, I like keeping it there because otherwise I feel like if it's not a goal, I won't do it. I like won't tell myself to challenge myself all the time. So I wanna make some sort of routine video. I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll see. I did submit my taxes and it took freaking forever to find everything, but I'm just really glad that that's done and that's a really big accomplishment. No late nights again in my nine to five. And then I wanna make sure I actually open my business credit card and finish the whole business process. I've opened my business bank account, now business credit card. And then for 80-20, kind of nothing really new here. Weekly meal planning, I wanna get back into my exercise routine and I wanna cook one to two new meals this month. If I don't, it's fine for the cooking because I just really wanna be like less metric focused and more focused on the actual goals that I'm doing and just like getting back into routine. So I feel like these goals are pretty vague, pretty chill this month and that's like what I'm going for. Personal goals, and this is really the focus of all of April for me. I'm really focusing on just getting back into my routine. So as you guys can see, there's like nothing really that new in terms of my goals for career, 80, 20 and personal. These are all things that I talk about all the time. Things that I feel like I try to make like big intentions for myself. I recently just came back from vacation at the end of March and I had a really, really amazing time. I even vlogged the whole thing but I feel like this is why I don't like theoretically traveling. You just get so out of your routine and then you're catching up for multiple days and life doesn't stop as you're catching up. So I feel like I had all these plans. I had the 10 mile run, like literally five or four days after I came back from vacation and I just, really still feel like I'm catching up. So I really wanna prioritize in April since I have no travel planned or anything. I just wanna get back into my routine and I really wanna focus on incorporating the habits that I've worked on for all of January through March that I feel good about and I know that these are my healthy habits. That is my big focus for April. So personally, this looks like a lot, but it's actually not. Be mindful of when I'm going to sleep. Like I won't be mad at myself if I go to sleep late ever, but 
I just want to be mindful of trying to sleep early. Like if it's close to 12, it's fine, but I just know that that doesn't set me up for success the next day. So I just want to be extra mindful of that. Track my habits again and my bullet journal, even though I didn't do it last month for the last two weeks, I really want to do it again just because I love this theme so much, especially in my bullet journal. And tracking stuff is a really good way to create habits out of what you're doing and just be more overall aware of what your mood is. So I really want to prioritize that. Journal one to two times a week, again, because I feel like without journaling, which I haven't done for all of April still, I just need that mental clarity and I need to like show up for myself. And journaling is truly a way that I show up for myself on top of exercise. So I really want to prioritize that and make sure that I do that this month. Start a new book. I I really like reading and I just like want to keep that healthy habit going. Lastly, make time to plan out each upcoming week in Notion on the weekends and be mindful of social plans. That's a really long one. I feel like I could probably split it up into two goals, but I find myself saying yes to like basically any plan that's ever presented to me and that's really unhealthy and that's not me taking care of myself because one, I'm not planning ahead of time, so I'm not aware of the things that I should be saying no to, and two, I just naturally want to be around everyone that I talk to. Like I love being around people. I'm an extrovert and it really fills my cup to be with loved ones. So it's really hard saying no because with those two things, like not planning and just naturally like wanting to say yes, I over plan myself. And then from Thursday night until Sunday night, I have a plan for like lunch and dinner every single day. And that is really, really draining and really unhealthy. So I want to be more mindful with planning my weeks every single week and being mindful of what social plans I am saying yes to so that I can allow myself rest time and recharge time and planning is kind of the only way to do that. That's a long-winded way of saying that's what all of my April goals are. I'm really happy with these goals. Again, I think that none of these goals are really like new, but that's the whole focus of April. I just want to get back into my routine and just feel like my best self again. So that's what April's big focus is for and I'm actually really looking forward to it. Lastly, I want to show you guys my calendars. Again, I plan everything in terms of like my YouTube, my personal, just everything is in Notion just because it's really easy for me and I really like the calendar feature on the Notion app. So here is my April monthly calendar. It's just basically a bunch of social plans in YouTube. As of now, I only have one sponsor for my YouTube channel in April and I'm totally okay with that because I need to like catch up and feel like I'm getting back into my routine and sponsorships just make it a lot harder and a lot more high pressure and it's just a lot more stressful so maybe it's a sign that i don't have that many sponsorships this month but this isn't my full-time job so i'm not really that pressed about it so that's my monthly calendar for april but then under my personal calendar i do have my youtube posting schedule and this is just linked to its own where is it youtube posting dates that's this same exact thing i just have it separate and i like to have both calendars in one tab but this is my YouTube posting schedule. This is what we're going for in April. I'm kind of thinking of doing a work from home routine, but I've never done that before. And I just feel uncomfortable in general about routines because I don't know why, <laughs> but I did plan it out and it's always easier to move things around than to think up of stuff on the spot. And especially for my week in my life, it's just when I know that I want to post it, I can know when I want to actually film it. So that's my YouTube posting schedule. And that is officially the end of all this monthly planning. I guess with that, let's go into our 2023 check-in. This is my 2023 goals notion template. And I do just kind of overall want to check in with you guys how everything is looking in terms of my yearly goals. As of now, I'm actually pretty happy with this. A lot of the goals remaining are very vague that I hope that as I continue to work on these for the rest of the year, I can say, yes, check, 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 check. I did do all of these things, but let's just check in on like each little bucket. Personal, read at least five books. I've officially read two books this year and that is like so freaking cool. I love that for myself and I've been really enjoying just like entertaining myself with reading and a good love story and a good just story story in general, just time off my phone. So I feel like I'm on a good track to read at least five books because I've already completed two. Weekly self-care, I think I haven't really been prioritizing this that much, but I have been in different ways. I'm just not really tracking it as well, but I do know that every single week I try to think of either, whether it's a manicure, which I did do a lot in January, but not really that much in February and March. If it wasn't manicures, it was journaling, it was sleeping early, it was reading. Reading is self-care to me. I do feel like I'm on track to prioritize prioritizing weekly self-care because if you jump down, we're not burning out this year. And if anything, I just want to feel like overwhelmed and stressed because that's normal and just not get myself to the point of burnout because that's like 10 levels past feeling overwhelmed and stressed. So create a consistent morning slash night routine. 
yes, I did do that. We talked about that last month. Grow my relationship with Thomas with something new. I'm still not exactly sure like what will make me check this off, but my relationship is always at the forefront. And everything that I do, I really think of Thomas as much as I think of myself. And I like love our relationship. So I just wanna make sure that I'm keeping it at the forefront and I'm focusing on growing it. And then become an early sleeper. I changed this to 10 p.m. bedtime instead of 9 p.m. because I think nine is just a little crazy. I'd love to be in bed by nine and then asleep by 9.30 or 10, but I feel like asleep by nine is just a little aggressive for me personally. So I changed it to 10 and I feel like that's a little bit more reasonable and doable. For health and fitness, focusing on 80-20 lifestyle, I think I really am making a good effort this year to eat more healthy, be more mindful of what I'm eating, and allow myself the balance of indulging and eating healthy. So I think I'm on good tracks with that. I feel like hopefully by the end of the year, I'll be able to just easily check that off. Not having it be very metric based, but saying like around 80-20 or like 60-40, Am I eating healthy? Cooking more, I am really happy that I feel like I'm on a good track with this too. I'm really enjoying cooking more. I'm using HelloFresh and Green Chef a lot more to just like get back into cooking in general. And I made kimchi chicke. Like I've been making really good stuff. I make salmon all the time now. I just really like it. I like cooking. It's like my mental commute after work, especially working from home. That's like really important to me. Cooking, I'm on good track for. Run my 10 mile race. Since it is April 6th, I did run my race on April 2nd or 3rd. It was on a Sunday. And and I didn't film any clips, but I will insert the reel that I made. Very, very, very hard, you guys. It was very hard. It actually wasn't even hard until the last like two miles because the first half just went by so quickly and then my knee started hurting. And then the last two miles, I was like, please, 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 when is this over? But luckily I did finish with my friend Jess who's literally training for a marathon. So my race pace was her training pace and that was like genuinely perfect because I couldn't have finished without her. And then maintain consistency with exercise. I feel like I'm on a really good track of doing this this year. I did participate in the Orange Theory like transformation challenge, which was really just an accountability challenge of going to Orange Theory three to four times, six out of the eight weeks that they were doing that challenge. And I did do that and I'm really happy because because I feel like it's making me really consistent with just exercise in general. I'm really happy because last year I did a lot of experimenting with exercise and I just really wanna be consistent and do the workouts that make me feel good. And for me, that's Orange Theory and running. So I would say I'm on track with that too. And then lastly, my career, I did get promoted at work. I talked about that last month. Make videos outside of my comfort zone at least one time a month. I'm definitely on track for doing that. I've been making so many videos outside of my comfort zone. Declutter with me, morning routine, something else I can't remember right now, but I've just been challenging myself a lot more as a creator this year, even doing new intros, color grading. I'm really trying to like level up my content this year and planning it out is what's making me actually do it and like achieve it. I did get a new piece of equipment for my YouTube channel. I got a new microphone and then I'm gonna do a rebrand probably around the summertime. Just like new fonts, maybe a new intro card by Type Haley. I'm not quite sure, but I just wanna do some sort of rebrand to like balance my creativity in the summertime. No burnout. Hopefully that will be totally complete. I'm really praying. And then lastly, make a notebook or you know what? I think I'm just gonna say release a new collection for JH Collective, which is my merch line or my small business. So those are my yearly goals. I think it's totally okay to change your goals throughout the year, especially just as you go through your year, you kind of figure out what works for you, what is gonna work with you, what is not working. I think goals are an ever fluid thing. It's not something that you just don't touch for 12 months, but it's something that you continue, something that you grow, something that you customize to yourself as you go through your year. And I think that's totally okay. I think that's genuinely healthy. And so I did make small changes to my yearly goals, but I feel like it's really to coordinate how I have been starting 2023 and actually living it since before I made these goals. So don't be afraid to change your goals if you need to, because I just did and I feel really good about them now. Quarterly breakdown, I focused a lot on my health and fitness in quarter one. And so quarter two is all about personal goals. And again, this is supposed to build off of each other. So quarter two's main focus is personal things like healthy habits, self-care, sleeping early, but that doesn't mean that I'm not focusing just as much on my health and fitness. I wanna maintain that and grow all of my goals, not feel like I'm just doing one thing at a time, but really building on my goals throughout the year. So quarter two, we're working personally. And then I do have a monthly, not run 10K. I always mess that up. 
but I do have a monthly breakdown too so that I can tell myself what I'm going to focus on holistically. So you can kind of see like the funnel of the yearly goals I have. All of my yearly goals, breaking it down a little bit more and then breaking it down monthly. And that's been really helping me a lot in terms of planning out what 2023 will be for me. So April, healthy habits, run a 10 miler. I already did one of those things, which means the rest of April is truly on my habits. And then more intentions to keep top of mind this year. All of this is totally the same. Also want to add one to like be more mindful of how much, how much I'm planning my social events because I just feel like I overdo it. So I feel like I can add to my intentions this year. And that is officially everything. Let's see, is there anything else in my notion that I wanna show you guys that pertains to the year? I don't think so, but 8020 lifestyle, this is how it looks. I just plan out my 20%, which is really just like a general timeline of when I'll have my like indulging soulful meals. I'm doing weekly dinner planning. It's really simple this month just because my mom and Thomas's mom did give us some food, but we do also have HelloFresh. So I didn't really have to add recipes or grocery lists, but I did do like a massive grocery haul of just like basics last week. So we're good there. I've been using this genuinely every single week all year and it's really helpful because it's very minimal. It's very simple and I just really like it so that's the 80 20 and then i'll show you guys my books in media hub too because i did add things we never got over by lucy score and it was five out of five because it was amazing that book i finished like a 500 page book in like five days and that's crazy because i literally read one book for all of 2022 i have a bunch of other books in my list that i want to read next and then i just have some pretty pictures and stuff you guys have seen my notion if you watch my notion tour i go through literally every single page so i'm not going to do that in this video but I think that's everything in terms of my yearly goals, calendar, monthly goals, just overall checking in on 2023. And I think that's it. So I'm going to stop the screen recording and that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Just coming along with me, planning out my life and my month and my year. And it's never too late to start planning. You can be a week into the month, 30% into the year, 50% into the month. You can do literally whatever when it comes to planning because you can always get your life together at any point of the day, month, year whatever it is it's literally never too late so if you guys are planners like me comment below we're here together aside from these monthly plan with me videos though i do have a work to live diaries where i show you guys how i balance my personal life during my work weeks because i do work nine to five full time so you guys should check out work to live diaries and guess that's it make sure you're subscribed if you're not already i post new videos every tuesdays and fridays i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next video but until then Miss you already.